movie, if that's possible. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming along today. My name is Derek Austin from Nuance Communications. I wanted to start by day, today by just showing you a 25 second video clip. So if we have some audio on the PC, let's see if it'll work for us. So we can have full screen on the computer. There once lived a pirate named Blackbeard. He was not nice. Hi. Delete not nice. The most ruthless pirate ever. Okay, that's not working. So we'll just skip the video. Um, my name is Derek Austin, as I said. I work with Nuance. We're a US company that specializes in speech recognition. What I'm going to do today is talk to you a little bit about uh, speech recognition, trends in speech recognition, where it is, and also hopefully show you the current state of speech recognition and how it might be useful to you in education. Of course, the most important thing about understanding how you speak for a computer is getting the most accurate transcription that it can. And Nuance has spent a lot of money in making voice recognition or speech recognition more accurate. So you can see from this graph that over just a few years, over, over three years, we've reduced the average error rate by 18%. And that's really the core thing about speech recognition is getting that right. As well as doing the basic technology and making applications that you can use on PCs, such as Dragon Naturally Speaking and Dragon Dictate on Macintosh, we also make a range of technologies available for other developers so that they can use those in their own applications. So many of the exhibitors here today, for example, might be using Nuance's text-to-speech, that is making the computer talk by giving it some English to read, or even embedding speech recognition inside their own applications. So today, just to mention a few trends before I show you what you can do with speech recognition now. There are a couple of different sort of areas that you need to be aware of when you're evaluating the software for use in your own classrooms or institutions. The first is that there are still different kinds of speech recognition. While the different sorts are getting closer together, they still differ in some fundamental ways. The first of these is speaker-independent versus speaker-dependent speech recognition. What that means is that some systems understand you and how you speak and what you can say, and they will tailor the way they work to how you speak. And that gives, at the moment, the highest accuracy for doing things like dictating documents and so on. The other kind is possibly more useful. It's speaker independent, so it means that anyone can walk up to a system that understands speech recognition and talk to it, and it will understand who they, who they are and what they're saying. At the moment, uh, the latter kind, the speaker dependent speech recognition, tends to be what we find on mobile devices. And most of the hard work in speech recognition on things like tablets, smartphones, is done in the cloud where big servers will take what you say and turn that into text and send it back to the mobile device. That means that you, first of all, have to have an internet connection for that to work. And second, uh, the amount of data that can be sent is limited. So usually your speech is limited to about 30 seconds of speech at a time. Speaker independent software, on the other hand, runs on a laptop device usually or a desktop device. And you can just talk at it for hours and it will keep up with you because all the work is done on the device itself. The other thing to be aware of is command and control versus transcriptions. There are two things you can, broad things you can use speech recognition for. The first of those is telling the computer what to do. Open an app, call a telephone, uh, save a document, print something. That's command and control, telling the computer what to do. Perhaps on the mobile devices you want to book travel, you want to do a search on the web, something like that. The other way you can use it, which is possibly particularly useful in education, is for transcription, where you're writing a document. Uh, you as, if you're a teacher, you might be writing a, a report or you might be writing a paper or something like that. On the other hand, if you're a student, it can be useful to you for the same purpose that a, it would be useful for a teacher. So be aware of those different sorts of use and how they compare and contrast. Some applications only use speech for command and control. Others use it only for, for transcription or dictation. Some of them use it for both. Language coverage is an issue. Uh, we need to have coverage for as many languages as we can. Nuance at the moment on, this, on the desktop doesn't have support for, for Bahasa, but on mobile phones and so on we do. And that's an area where you need to be aware of what language differences there are. With English, on the other hand, we do have a variation for Southeast Asian accents, so you can create an English profile in Dragon that works well for local speakers. 
Then there are specific applications in specific areas. I was at a conference on the Gold Coast in Australia last week uh, run by uh, a company called Spectronics, which focuses on uh, inclusive education for applying technology to help kids who are disabled or who have problems in some areas. And a big area where they are using speech recognition, the teachers that attended that event, was for children with dyslexia who, have, who can have no trouble coming up with thoughts but may have trouble actually writing those out. And it's still difficult for, for those children to be accepted into mainstream education because we all tend to make them want to, we all try to make them do the same thing as everybody else. But these new technologies give you other options with those kids. And um, for example, there's a push on in Australia at the moment to have children with those problems being allowed to use this technology to sit exams. At the moment, if you have a physical disability in most places, you're allowed to use Dragon to sit exams. But if you just have a, a dyslexic, you know, a language disability that means you can use your, your fingers and wrists okay, but you can't necessarily write something, you're not allowed to use this technology. So there's a lot of room for development and improvement in those areas. And finally, personal productivity and language learning are also areas where we can look at this technology moving forward. So what I wanted to do is just give you some idea of the state of the art of this technology and, and how it actually used. Has anyone here tried using a Dragon product before? We've got one person. Okay, so this, this is reasonably new. You look old enough to have used it for some time, sir. <laughs> most of this technology that lives on the desktop, this is the sort of technology that will be most useful for, say, uh, students who are starting to write papers and so on. So, you know, primary school, late primary school and upwards, tertiary and secondary education. Using this technology, we still use one of these. This is a noise cancelling headset. It has two microphones in it. One directs at the mouth like this, and the other points at the room, so that hopefully any of the noise coming in this room is actually going to be taken out of my voice, and only my voice will reach the Dragon speech recognition inside the computer. Let's just check that our audio is actually working here today. So I've installed Dragon so that it actually lives down in this toolbar. Sorry, we do have some network lag issues as well. Let's just see if this is working. The first thing I'm the first thing I'm going to do is wonder why my right click isn't working. Let's just check the microphone to make sure that the microphone is working OK. The microphone you put at the side of your mouth out of the way of direct breath so that you don't make wind sounds. And then you just check that the mic is working OK. While you're reading this, the computer will adjust your microphone volume settings and then beep to signal that the process is complete. Speak into the microphone as if you were talking to a friend in person. It should only take about 10 seconds to complete this step. If you do not hear the beep, start reading again from the beginning until you do. While you are reading this, the computer will adjust your microphone volume settings. We got a beep, so that's good news. Now we do a, a quick check of the signal to noise ratio. For Dragon to recognize your voice accurately, it needs to check the quality of your audio system and your microphone. Speak into the microphone as clearly and naturally as you did in the previous step. While reading this, Dragon is listening to you and examining the quality of your audio. Once Dragon has enough information, you will hear a beep. And you can play that back to just check that there's no funny noise coming from your audio. For Dragon to recognize your voice accurately, it needs to check the quality. And while my voice may be funny, that sounds pretty much like me, so that's good. Now we're ready to go. So Dragon, you can turn on and off, and you'll see me using my finger to turn the microphone on and off down in the bottom right hand corner. Can you see that little microphone down there? I can point at it and press with the mouse and then give it a command. So let's start Microsoft Word. Start Microsoft Word. Maximize window. Welcome to my demonstration of how Dragon Naturally Speaking might be able to help you in education. Full stop, new paragraph. So as you can see, comma, everything I say is now turned into text and put into the document that I'm working on at the moment, full stop. Dragon will work with practically every Windows application, Dash, or on the Mac we have equivalent software, full stop, new paragraph. And the accuracy out of the box is pretty good now, full stop. Correct will stop, full stop. New paragraph. You can see that if you make an error, you can correct it, and Dragon will hopefully learn from your correction and get it right next time, full stop, new paragraph. 
Dragon can be very accurate over time, full stop. New paragraph. As well as entering text into any Windows application, comma, you can also format text, full stop. Correct will stop, full stop. Underline Dragon. Choose all. Go back. Select the first paragraph. Make that bold. Go to the top. Select this paragraph. Select this paragraph. I hate it when Dragon doesn't work for me. This is very unusual. Let's try deleting the whole document. Cut document. Start Microsoft Word. Maximize window. Sometimes Microsoft Office gets confused, full stop. New paragraph. Correct its. Gets. Select this paragraph. Select all. Go to end. Insert two by four paragraph. Undo that. New paragraph. So all I've got at the moment is text entry. Unfortunately, my formatting commands are not working at the moment, full stop. We rely on Microsoft Office to do this, full stop. So probably I have to con restart the whole computer to do this and get it working, full stop. And I'm not going to do that right now, full stop. New paragraph. Let's see if I can send an email. Send an email to Nathan Taylor. Cap hello from Kuala Lumpur. Press tab. Hello, Nathan, comma, new paragraph. I'm doing a presentation at the show in Kuala Lumpur, full stop. There are lots of people here who are very impressed with what Dragon can do, full stop, new paragraph. Hope to see you here next time, full stop, new paragraph. Best regards, comma, new line, Derek. Click send. I can also browse the web. First lesson as a Dragon presenter is don't forget to turn the microphone off. Click don't save. Open top website for traveling to Australia. So say you're planning a holiday, you can actually search the web just using your voice and browse around and find particular things that you want. Scroll down, scroll up, click link. Choose nine. Let's see what the entry requirements are. Scroll down, scroll up. Don't know why we've got the UK site, but as you, as you can see, it's very easy to kick back and just cruise the web using your voice and see what's happening around the web. Open top website for traveling New Zealand. Let's see if we can get a more interesting site for New Zealand. Scroll down. Scroll up. That's not too bad. Click no. Start Microsoft Word. Maximize window. You can also use Dragon for complete command and control. So if you have somebody who uh, can't use their arms and legs, for example, but they can speak OK, you can fit them up with a microphone. And you can use a thing called Mouse Grid, which lets you position the mouse anywhere you want. For example, Mouse Grid, 1, 2, 5, 1, Mouse Click. So you can see that any menu or any item on there I can actually control by using this mouse grid technology. Mouse grid. One, two, nine, mouse click. This is the title for my new book, new paragraph. Well, I hope that's given you an overview of how Dragon can be useful to you in education, full stop, new paragraph. 
you can see that I'm dictating punctuation as I go, full stop. And this is the best way to get good results with dictation, full stop. There is also an option to have automatic dictation done so that that can be done for you without any intervention by the voice when you're speaking, full stop. But the best accuracy with punctuation is done when you dictate it yourself, full stop, new paragraph. Correct will stop, full stop, delete stop, full stop, new paragraph. That's better, exclamation mark, delete that, exclamation mark, new paragraph. I think my computer needs a reboot, full stop, new paragraph. So thank you very much for your time and attention this morning. We have a booth, a stand down the corridor there. So if there are any questions you would like to ask, please come along and have a chat with us. And we'd be only too happy to talk about them. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time this morning. And I look forward to talking with you later on. Thank you very much.